Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to watch Doug Doug Forces Twitch Chat to play an unethical D&D game, which, as everyone else would know, is just a normal D&D game, because if you're playing it and you haven't committed a few war crimes, are you really min-maxing in such a way to make your DM actively despise you? Maybe that's just my playgroup. On the other hand, my DM is also a DM PC player, who then min-maxes his own character to destroy his own balance. Yeah, so I'm probably not the best person to ask what's normal in D&D. That said, Doug Doug is insane. I have seen the challenges he made for his fans in GTA 5. Yeah. So we're just going to jump right in, see what happens, and hope it's nearly as bullshit as that, because if it is, I am really looking forward to this. Otherwise, you guys know the deal. Link below, video. Hit it up. Let's get started. Today, we're going to find out if Twitch chat can survive in my deranged Dungeons & Dragons campaign about Walmart? an evil magic Walmart. Here is how this actually works. I built an app. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Where? <laughs> this is literally Walmart the dungeon crawl. I have seen way too many pictures of Walmart and been in an actual Walmart at least one time to know that anything he comes up with, it was going to be competing with reality on this one. Oh, this makes it so much worse, but also so much better. Big, scary programming stuff. BSC cover over the actual program. Okay. Let's three random Twitch viewers talk in the bottom of the oh, screen. Oh, they're actually getting to as three in? different characters Ooh. in my campaign, including the beefy barbarian, the wise cracking bard, and the brilliant wizard. On each turn, these chatters can decide to do. And those are very AI generated, but it makes sense considering Doug Doug's usage of AI is constant. Uh, really, his character is a gun in a Walmart. How old is this? It's only four months old. Uh, it's far enough from that happening that it doesn't hurt nearly as much, but whoo, maybe not the best choice. Do whatever the hell they want, and I'll use this die to deter Fireball, laser attack, what? Oh yeah, I want to do what? I like doing what? Determine the success of their actions. And the characters only have three total health, so if chat doesn't play this well, they will permanently die, and their character is out of the campaign. And as a- how the hell did this thing go over an hour? With the chat I've seen here, suicide is the very first option. I'm going to lick an outlet. If that is not what they do immediately, I will be surprised. Unless that only takes one hour. This is a heavily simplified version of Dungeons & Dragons to make things very simple to follow, so don't worry. He says that like I don't actually expect him to have everyone screw it up. Admittedly, it's not a bad way to do it. Let me just take it down to simple pass-fail rolls. You know, I just realized with all the modifiers and all the ways you can break the game in your favor, taking it down this way is making it easier on him. But it's actually harder on the players because they can't bullshit their way into guarantee success. Did he accidentally make this hard? Sorry if you haven't played the game before. I'm going to explain more specifics <laughs> about how this works as we get into the campaign. But for now... Let the adventure and begin. And he has entire class Welcome of the Twitch chat to the land of Chatopia. You three are best Chatopia. friends who've been traveling across the lands together. Many trials and tribulations you've experienced, but unfortunately, oh just a couple of weeks ago, you came across... Murphalicious. Shout. Let the lady kickflip. Nikoros the second. Aw, oh, that's my barbarian. Nails of another kind. I would like to kickflip, please. Oh my god, they're actually just... A witch in the woods. This witch, known as Baba Gaboosh, cast oh a God, brought... curse on each one of you. This curse had the strange effect that only uh... a single one of your brain cells actually work at any given time. Gasp. Before, it felt <laughs> like all of your brain could kind of talk at once, but now it's almost as though like a single brain cell has complete control of your brain for like two... I mean, we're talking about people on Twitch. Are we really sure it's a single brain cell? Uh, I mean, it's not like we're on YouTube where we get a whole half. Two turns or so. It's very strange. This witch cast the curse on you and then wandered off into the woods laughing maniacally. <laughs> You've been searching for a Where's cure ever child? since. Your three brain cells right now are Murphalicious, Nykoros 2D, and Nails of Another Kind, who are the only ones in control of your entire body. So the three I adventures set out though. across the land looking for a cure to this strange curse, and they stumble across the town of Walltown, famous for its walls and its stores like Walmart and Walgreens. And you guys go into a local... I don't know why, but for some reason I'm thinking Season 1 Attack on Titan. Specifically the abridged. Praise the walls. Also, I really love the setting he's using. And getting the token to fit underneath it, so it has to be layered. Neat. 
local tavern. And as you step into the tavern, a local pig dwarf shouts out at you from across the is? table. He says, adventurers, adventurers, can you help us? My name is Porky. I'm the mayor here at Walltown, and I need your help. You see, Walter, Porky, the local oh owner of Walmart, recently came across a magical staff. Doug, this song isn't really doing it for me. Well, hold, okay, um, <laughs> this? Yeah, I like that. Okay, thanks. Oh adventurers, the warlock who owns the local Walmart founded a staff that seems to have given him some sort of crazy magical powers. And ever since then, a There's a joke in there about a magical staff in a Walmart, but, um... <laughs> oh, let's leave that off a little R34. That's... A few weeks ago, he's been turning his Walmart in merchandise the into wild monsters and demons. They've been leaving the Walmart and attacking the villagers. We aren't soldiers. We can't fight this. We're just a... I'd like to point out the day I'm watching this, it's almost Black Friday. So, rabid people attacking a near a Walmart. Seems normal. Couple of little innocent pig dwarfs. I don't know how to fight. We need somebody to go into that Walmart, <laughs> take down Walter, and get rid of that staff. And you even think to yourself, huh, magical staff. Maybe that could be the cure to this strange witch illness that you've been dealing with. Porky says, Adventures, <laughs> if I guide you through, will you travel into Walmart and take down this evil warlock? Can I have a drink first? Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> it's on, I guess if I'm asking you, yeah, okay, it's on the house. And he goes over here and he pours you a big glass of wine. You go up, you start chugging some wine. He says, you guys can like have a drink or two first if you're nervous that's oh, fine no. can i get an orange juice on the rocks <laughs> yeah i mean this is like a tavern let me go and he goes he goes jumps through the window and he goes <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm not sure how often doug doug has run as a dm but this right here is exactly what i've done to every dm i've ever lived in so i'm kind of enjoying someone else pull the same bullshit i do but just randomly derailing the campaign by asking things about the setting you're in it's like oh, yeah you're in a tavern what's the most alcoholic thing that will force me to do a concentration check you sure you want to do that no let's do it anyways should i do that no are they going to do it looks like they already are goes out back he grabs a fresh <laughs> orange and he comes back in and he uh he squirts it under your hands and it's very fresh. Wait, let talk about reward for this quest. Reward? But the people of this town, we're, we're struggling. <laughs> we need help. Yeah. Hey, it's all Loot my goblin. fingers. Okay, and he's oh, looking at you. Wow, you really like that orange juice, uh huh, Mr. Uh, scary Orc Guy. Wouldn't just helping the people of Wall Town be reward enough? Eat Here, Bard with goes fingers. again. <laughs> he stares now at you, Bard. He always did this during our marriage. Oh, oh God, God they're divorced. You, says, well, well, maybe, do we really need the Bard? Do we need the Bard? Do you guys Two think gold, we... Two gold, no less. Two gold in this economy? <laughs> It's 2023. We don't even have fresh orange juice. I had to go pick oranges. You think I have two gold sitting around? Okay, what about this? If we go to that Walmart, you can take anything you want out of it. Okay, one half gold and orange juice. You see him look carefully, pondering, and he says, half gold to get rid of the menace. Wait, you're serving orange juice? I'll have some. <laughs> oh my god. You Sir, you just had orange juice about 20 okay, seconds I'm ago. Okay, for robbing Walmart. He says, okay, I will give you that half gold. Reaches under the counter, pulls. <laughs> Oh, he tries so hard, and we're not even five minutes in, and they've already derailed it from the plot to, we're going to rob a store. Oh, if anything, these are much more ethical than most D&D campaigns. Oh my it's out God. two coins that have a, a little pig shape on them. Smacks them down on the pig counter. Coin. He says, this is your half gold, and whatever you want from the Walmart, you can take. I was more thinking we were saving the town rather than robbing it. But uh, yeah, details. if that's what, how you want to think about it, that's okay. So everybody's on board. And you got a yeah. bar and a barbarian uh, and a give wizard. Give that orange juice, by the way. He goes and jumps out the window. <laughs> Let's go. He comes back. He okay. mashes a few more orange juices together. Deal. The four of you, you each raise a glass of orange juice, clink it together. You chug it down excitedly, and then you head out the door back into Walltown. Porky joins you on the field. Fields of Walltown. You wander through alleyways, a couple of small streets, no walls? through a few farms, till finally, after ten or so minutes, rising up on the horizon, you see a gigantic medieval oh Walmart. God. This thing is fucking huge. Just there's a joke in there somewhere, but yeah. Way too on the nose. Looking at its massive spires and signs makes you quiver with fear Just or delight depending Walmart. on your character. You see Porky behind you trembling. This is clearly no warrior, this little pig dwarf. You steal yourself. You push open the doors and you enter into the first floor of medieval Walmart. And as the doors slowly open, your eyes mm. adjust to the light and you see that you are dead set in the middle of the Walmart food department. My you see in front God. Of you aisles and aisles of all different kinds of food. Every food you can imagine at a Walmart going all the way back. Random There's even like a giant open fire in this bakery can i kick flip off of a cart 
What? Y yes! Right as she begins to step towards them, you hear something over the loudspeaker. Oh, Show, no. Porky! You brought friends to try to take my Walmart down! Getting tired of my little monsters, huh? It's not going to work, Porky. Me and Walmart are going to take over all of Walltown! This staff makes me unstoppable, Porky. I don't care that you're the mayor. Prepare to die! He's in the, the mayor? food department! Get him! Dr. Pepper! And you see a Dr. Pepper jump down from the shelves and land. Oh, this God. sentient Dr. Pepper with evil looking eyes glares at you with murder in its intent. But that's not. Oh no, are they actually going <sighs> Sorry, my mind is going crazy with all the horrible things you can possibly say in this situation. Oh, it's, I'm actually having to repress so many phrases right now. Also, a lot of references to 90 commercials. Like, not 90, but 90s commercials that had really weird catchphrases that were like, super hip for drinks. I'm like, this is the time where I would start quoting them, and I'm not going to do that, because even I have standards. Not all, we also have Cheetos! It's even flaming, flaming hot. hot. It's particularly scary. Not just that, we have... Not the doctor. Oreos! And an Oreo jumps down. It doesn't actually look that intimidating. He looks a little bit confused. But still, the guy sounds That's pretty uh, Dear intense. God! <laughs> and of course, a bowl of cereal to kind of scrape the roof Fruit of your loops. mouth, and it'll be uncomfortable. Poor Ah, uh, see, that's not even nearly there. Fruit Loops are bad, but I mean, if they win Captain Crunch, that would be a monster. You don't deal with that. You lose skin on that. He opens his mouth. He says, no, that cereal is so painful, not Fruit Loops. And finally, a monster that I've created just for you, Porky. A gigantic what? Hot Pocket. And you see a huge Damn. Hot Pocket emerge from this fiery bakery. And as it moves forward towards you, you actually see that it leaves behind a pool of smoldering hot tomato lava. That looks deadly. Okay. All joking aside, that's actually a really cool effect to deny area. So you'd have to play around that. That's a really cool effect. I'm kind of surprised more people don't do that. To force movement. Huh. Into the touch, all the foods begin slowly moving towards you. Venom in their eyes. And now we begin the adventure. The Barbarian, you have the first move. What would you like to do? Now that combat has begun, oh, it is no. the Barbarian's turn. Now, the Barbarian is oh. Twitch chat's... Here's some info about the Barbarian, so there's a change depending on the start of the stream. Barbarian is a melee class. He wields a battle axe. as an armor class of 60. Not bad. Not too good, but not too bad if you don't have a lot of fires. So he is much harder to hit for enemies. He can use the following moves. Reckless attack every turn. Add five to your attack. Oh, he does get modifiers, but enemies added to theirs too. So he doesn't get advantage. He just gets a plus five. Admittedly, that's not bad if there's not many others to modify this. Extra attack. You can attack twice. Okay, straightforward on that one. I mean, if they're playing a level one or something, attacking twice as early is pretty powerful. Intimidating Prentice. Wait, presence once per stream. Oh, extra attack once per floor. Okay, I missed that. You scream and frighten all nearby enemies who spend their next turn running away from you. Tank. He's way harder for the enemies to hit, and he has a battle axe to whoop some ass. He's also known to be a very supportive but very stupid bro, and he can't tell left and right apart. He's also got his own <laughs> unique spells. Reckless attack can be used every oh, turn. This nice. makes your next attack more powerful and likely to hit, but every then you're weaker good. to enemies on the next turn, too. The extra attack spell just gives you an extra attack on your turn, but it can only be used Save once for a final per level, floor probably. of the Walmart. And intimidating presence will shout and frighten away all nearby enemies, but it can only be used oh one time ever with all of Nothing these options good. at his disposal what will the barbarian do first i'll sack down a monster from a shelf next to the cheetos for a damage bonus <laughs> the barbarian what? runs past the dr pepper runs over to this aisle he grabs a cool monster off of the shelf he fucking shotguns the whole thing like a total frat bro and he feels his muscles and his blood pumping his next attack <laughs> is definitely gonna be stronger next up oh my god doug is actually one Nice that he's playing with whatever they say. Two, he's giving them bonuses for role play. All this aside, all the unethical stuff, all the bullshit he's probably going to drop in. He's doing the one thing that is the most insane and one of the things I love to see. Giving incentive to do crazy shit. This is cool. And I love seeing it because it just is one of the ways that makes the game more innovative and more interesting. Because when you just play a straightforward game, it's like, okay, you rolled, here's the numbers, here's the attack, we got it, we're good, set, nice. It's fun when you're doing a super min maxi critical fight system where it's all about that. But if you want to go into the more of the RPG side and you want to just see what you can get away with and the DM is willing to play with it, you can do some crazy ass shit as long as you know how to keep it within reason. And the fact that he didn't ask for a bonus to do it, he just asked to do it and then Doug Doug ran with it. That's actually really impressive as an on-the-fly improv, and I love seeing it. So 
yeah, he's definitely done something like this before, and I wish we knew what his other D&D games were like. And if they're out there and I just don't know about them, oh, I hope so, because I want to see it after this. Is the Bard's turn. Now, the Bard is physically weaker than the Barbarian, but yeah. he is a master of magical speech, and he's known oh. for being really horny. Is also, he, gonna... he and the wizard are divorced. Yeah, so standard Bard. They're all the bard divorced. spells include vicious mockery, which lets him hurl a magical insult at an enemy. Cure yep. wounds, which heals an ally for one health. Very powerful, but it can only be used actually once more than per standard floor. D &D. Motivational speech, which boosts all allies' next attack, but can only be used once per floor. Oh, and suggestion, useful. which magically influences a creature to do whatever you tell them, but you can... Friend or foe. Does it imply other players as well? Oh no. Considering they're playing up the divorced angle, they could do some stupid shit with that. Only use it one total time. What does the bard choose to do? Oh, He'll no. cast motivation speech. I'm literally eating them for breakfast. It's going to be piece of cake. He's doing it and right suddenly off the, the wizard, the barbarian, and you feel super motivated. Oh, you can tell your next turn is going to rip ass. Wizard, what would you like to do? Now, the wizard is the team's main spellcaster. She's very vulnerable, oh, no. but she has powerful magic attacks. Plus, she can do a kickflip on almost anything. <laughs> The wizard spells include Ray of Frost, which shoots a bolt. Wait, you just get Ray of Frost every turn, but Magic Missile is once per floor? Yeah, sure. They are also slowed down. Oh, so you can keep them down. Nice. The Frost Control. at an enemy. Magic Missile, which shoots missiles that are guaranteed to hit an enemy, but you can only use it once per floor. Damn. Major Image, which creates a big 20-foot illusion also once per of floor. your choice, but only once per floor. And Polymorph, which transforms an enemy into an animal of your choice. It's extremely powerful, so she only gets to use it once. Oh. <laughs> so he definitely nerfed Polymorph. On the other hand... Depending how long the stream is, just an hour, that's more often than most people get to use it, actually, now that I think about it. Huh. Also, any animal of your choice. I'm sure that won't go bad at all. Once. I would like to freeze the Dr. Pepper to make the can explode. <laughs> yeah, oh good my call. God, the way this should work is that it would normally be a 14, but because the can is weak to frost, it's a 13. <laughs> and then because she got motivated by the bard speech, it's actually an 8. Damn. 17! You Ooh. fucking crush him! You shoot the frost bolt directly at the Dr. Pepper, hits him square in the chest, and you see him start to go Ooh, until the whole can bursts outwards. <laughs> Dr. Pepper's dead. I even have blood. It's not blood as Dr. Pepper. <laughs> right. Okay. Eh, it tastes about the same. hot Cheetos. They look horrified over at the dead Dr. Pepper and then run up to you angrily, Barbarian. And they spray spicy Cheeto dust directly in your eyes. They need a uh, 16 yes, to hit. Ah, bag attack. Oh, shit, Ooh. 17. So the Cheetos sprays the dust in your First eyes. First damage. Oh, God, even with the monster, it connects with you. The Barbarian is knocked down. Ah, it burns. The agony. And one of his hearts <laughs> drops down. The Barbarian is down to two. Is he going to die right the back? cereal is also going to come over. to try to whack on this Barbarian before the monster can take effect. He kind of reaches his arm of Fruit Loops out, tries to rub the roof of your mouth and get it all scratched <laughs> up. He needs a 16 to hit you. Is it going to be a 20? Ah! Uh, right you chop down. You not bite the, the fruit loops. loops in half. It doesn't work. The Oreo runs forward, and the hot pocket also lumbers slowly, and you see the trail of lava grow behind him. And in the corner, yeah, Porky the pig dwarf valiantly shivers like a coward and oh, doesn't help out right at away. all. Barbarian, you are up. What do you want to do? I want an extra attack the Cheetos than Fruit Loops. Oh shit! For the first one, Barbarian, you swing your axe towards the flaming hot Cheetos. Now you're Probably fucking a juiced on monster enemies. right now. Normally you would need a 14, but you only need an 11. But you're even more juiced because that motivational speech from the Oh, board. he did that too. You're a six or above. You will Don't be in that one. Don't be in that one. Cheetos. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, Ten, oh. The axe slices through the bag. Just Seal enough. Compressed air. Shoot out. And he crumples like he was compressed by hydraulic press. This thing dies instantly. Uh, and he starts bleeding Dr. Pepper everywhere. But then with your They're double all attack, with Dr. you turn Pepper, around monster. and you send your axe flying towards the Fruit Loops as well. This is also a six because you're still motivated and hopped up on monster. Good luck. 13! The axe connects with the Fruit yeah. Loops. The Fruit Loops also falls. And what's crazy is apparently the Fruit Loops were also mixed with Dr. Pepper. Clean up on aisle five. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Bard, you are up. The Oreo is closing in with the hot oh pocket my God. coming in slow. Ill cast cure wounds. Heal Barbarian. Smart. Okay. The Bard, after motivating his team, moves forward to the Barbarian and replaces his hand gently upon the Barbarian's chest. Magical love energy you, starts flowing through him. The Barbarian <laughs> gives him a fist bump and the a head bromance. nod. I love you, bro. In a completely platonic way. Of course. Ah, oh, damn. It's a love triangle.
the bromance is real. Of course, of course, of course. Look, can't a couple dudes just be bros and heal each other? He used to do that to me. <laughs> the wizards feel oh all lonely God. watching those two bros heal each other. Wizard, what would you like to do? I want to major image a big mouth. <laughs> Sorry, what? could you give me more? So the mouth will scare the hot pocket. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm looking up a picture. This is just fish. The wizard what? uses her major <laughs> image spell they to make a gigantic, illusory fish. fish head. The fish head looks like it just might be able to chomp it. Now, this hot pocket does look pretty bold. Oh. It's going to have to roll to see if he's actually intimidated by this monstrous oh head. Now, God. he picked what is I the most confident fish. enemy, so it's going to be a little hard to do this. 12 or above, <laughs> and the hot pocket is terrified. Let's see it. That one, that one, that one. Oh. 17. So this fish head moves forward, and the hot pocket's like, holy shit! This guy's freaked the fuck out. He starts running it wasn't backwards. Oh, it was as fast oh. as he can towards the elevator in the far left. You see the trail of lava follow him. The that might actually go bad for them. Sit here Noise. quivering for a little bit. That's my wizard. <laughs> Now, Not on anymore. Their turn, the hot pocket is just running away, terrified. The Oreo is gonna move though. Seems a little scared. But he moves up to the wizard and tries to whack you with his forehead and cover you with cream. Just like my ex-husband. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna follow up on that. Wizard, you are a little weaker, so he needs to roll a 12 or above to hit you. They're just going to town on that one. 14. And you drop down to two. But your two friends are nearby and you bought yourself some time. That being said, you hear a loud noise. And the megaphone turns back on. You look a little powerful. I guess I can't hold back against you three. It's time for my secret weapon. A gigantic dino nugget! And oh my god. Yes, jumps a nugget. down from this shelf. This thing lumbers forward making big dinosaur breathing noises. Now Porky, from behind you, he shouts out. I've heard about the dino nugget. It can only see with movement. If you don't move, we should be safe. Shut up, Porky. You're doing literally nothing. <laughs> Now, That's the point. this next turn begins, it's time to pick some new Twitch oh, chat no. brain cells. Every few turns, I'll select three new... Oh, it's every few turns they change out. Oh, geez. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. I liked how they were playing this one. They're actually really good at playing off each other. Random viewers to take control of the characters, and they have to pick up where the others left off. Hey, oh, thank you, man. three. Way to kick this off. New brain cells have taken over the team. It is now up to the barbarian to, to decide what to do next. Cell. I go to the shelf and take three bottles of ketchup. I try to hide them underneath my armor. Okay. You come up near the fish head, you grab three bottles of ketchup, what? you start shoving them into your armor. <laughs> Bard, you are up next. What would you like to do? Can I mock the Dino Nugget by saying you went extinct 100 million years ago? Ooh. God. You fucking got him, dude. I can't God believe it's damn. not chicken. God damn. You jump over the body of the flaming hot Cheetos. You run up past the gigantic fish head. You're just within earshot to shout at the dino nugget and say, you went extinct 100 million years ago, bitch. Not only that, you're still motivated from that speech you gave a while ago. Oh, yeah. So instead of the normal 14, you only have to roll a nine. Good luck. That one, that one, that one. Haven't seen one yet. 15. Ah. The words cut into the dinosaur's heart. He frowns a little bit and he goes, oh, man, all my friends and family are dead and I'm made out of chicken. He's still kicking. He's still alive. But that yeah. thing really crushed. That actually descended. made me sad. Can you give the oh dino God. nugget a little teardrop? Okay, the dino nugget's really sad from that. Wizard, you are up. I would uh, like to tip some milk from the shelf on the Oreo. Oh, good play, good play. On the wizard's turn, she grabs an entire <laughs> carton of milk and I just cast dumps fight. it onto the Oreo. Now, Oreos are weak to milk, so you're going to get plus two on your roll. A roll of 12 or above will connect. <laughs> oh! oh, no! Not only Rick do you fail. miss the Oreo entirely, but the milk just spills all over the floor and you start slipping around. You, oh my God, your your feet swoop out Is the out from wizard going to die you now? You fall onto the floor. You lose your next turn because you miss so badly. I love floor milk. <laughs> oh God. Okay, the dino nugget, fresh from crying, moves forward towards you, Bard. But it's he does personal. encounter this gigantic fish head. Now at this point, he's so emotionally hurt that this fish head is not very likely to scare him. This fish head is rolling. If it's 18 or above, he scares the dino nugget. It oh. doesn't scare him. Is he in the lava? He is in the lava, but he doesn't seem to care. And with what? that, his giant oh. dino nugget head reaches down and takes a bite out of you, Bard. He needs to roll a 13 to hit you. That's more than I expected for the Bard. Seven, you dodge out of the way at the last second. The hot pocket up here, he's still terrified of that fish. But as he turns around, he sees that the dino nugget was able to walk right up to it. He's a little encouraged by his ally. Oh, you see no, him turn around yeah. and he slowly starts inching backwards. And the Oreo stands. This is actually a really intense game, oddly enough, and he's playing it really well. Doug Doug's general level of insanity right now is making him an incredibly good DM. I knew this was going to be silly, and I was like, oh, it's unethical. He's going to do some horrible things to them. No, he's just actually a really good DM telling a fun story and getting to overact everything in such a fun way. Yeah, this is just making me want to play D&D more. That's going to be awesome. Because I can still, if I don't have to randomly go to take the cast of the vet again. E.
Standing in a bunch of milk tries to attack you, wizard. Normally he would have the advantage, but there is milk kind of on his little feet. And that's his Over weakness. above, and the Oreo hits you. Ooh. Oh, just barely. You did that thing where like you're on the ground in a, an action movie, and you see the attack coming, and you like roll over to the side really quick, and it just barely misses. <laughs> and now you're covered in milk. I take two of the ketchup bottles and try to really quick, and it just barely misses. And now you're covered in milk. I wouldn't have said anything, but he just gave it that little weight. Just a couple fractions of a second. Dude, wait. Ah, so now we have an image of the wizard covered in milk. We all know. We all know exactly what's going on here. I take two of the ketchup bottles and try to cover the Dino with it so he can't oh see next God. turn. <laughs> okay, the barbarian takes his bottles of ketchup. He moves forward and he squirts them oh, directly phasing into out the, the Dino Nugget's eyes. Well. I'm going to say you need an 11 and above to hit. It won't damage him. It'll just make him What's blind. a 20? What's a 20? Get a 20. Uh, 11! You squirt the ketchup directly enough? in the Dino Nugget's eyes. And he roars around in anger. How do I draw the ketchup? <laughs> So he's just <laughs> sobbing and he's covered in ketchup. Bard, you are up. What do you want to do? I want to back away and annoy the nugget with my flute. So the bard so backs up flute. and then uses his flute to belt out a musical insult at the dino nugget. The music will be worse than the current song playing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song. Hold on, let me play a better one. Damn. Um, this music is better than your future. Oh, shit. And the dinosaur is already emotionally hurt, and he's covered in ketchup, and he's embarrassed, so he's particularly emotionally vulnerable right now. 13 and above, and you hit. What is it going to be? Oh, oh shit. As you so play close your to flute, a 19. And the words float 20. across. You see them magically instill themselves into this dino nugget. He cries one last ketchup-covered tear, and then collapses, dead and cooked on oh, the floor. Oh, he's already dead? You guys really fucked that dinosaur. Man. Damn. You're just letting the wizard die. Wizard, you are up. What do you want to do? Run away, making a milk trail as I go. <laughs> oh, my okay. God. So there's milk all over the floor. You pick yourself up, and you try to book it as far away as you can. You get about here. And because you're still sopping wet with milk, a big trail follows you on the way there. Milk, 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 milk. <laughs> it's fucking milk. Come on. Sure, it's milk, dog. <laughs> <laughs> the Oreos are up. The Oreo sees the wizard run away, but since she is dripping milk all over the place, he doesn't. How did this not get age restricted? <laughs> oh, God, I am five years old and loving this. It's really so want to stupid. follow that. He's clearly not a fan of milk. So instead, he runs forward and goes for the bard. He tries to give a big forehead bump. Now he has bard blood. Face. He's got to roll. Sorry, Dr. Above. Pepper and milk. Yeah, that actually sounds. Oh shit! Oh not no! He fell right into Dr. Pepper. He kind of stumbles forward and he trips over the dead Cheeto bag and falls forward, bumps into the wizard, and then falls backwards into the milk. The dude is soggy and soaky. Definitely not moving next turn. Meanwhile, with the Dino <laughs> Nugget dead, the hot pocket, he starts running back towards you, dripping hot lava behind him. That is one fine-looking hot pocket. <laughs> he Take always a has been into all kinds of hot pockets, <laughs> except for yours. Oh! <laughs> Can I eat the Oreo? You can definitely try to eat this Oreo. The barbarian <laughs> runs forward to where the Oreo is laying there helpless. Reaches forward and tries to take a big chop Oreo. out of his head. The Oreo is weakened. He's vulnerable. 13 or above. Nine. Oh. Unfortunately, the milk also makes you kind of slip. The milk's just kind of fucking everybody up here. Bard, you are Yeah, up. that's what, what milk do? does. I cast suggest on the useless pig dwarf, telling him to get into the fight. What? You're using the suggestion now? The bard is going to use his one-time move. He walks towards Porky, oh, who at this no. point has just been cowering, doing nothing. What do you say to Porky? Be beef my friend. <laughs> okay. Porky's a, a little confused, but he can tell that you are be, magically be. suggesting that he gets into this fight and helps take down this Oreo. He does have to roll to try oh to resist God. it. Eight or above, and Porky goes along with it. Porky's eyes lights up. You see a little magical influence he is in the his brain, and he says, yeah, you know what? Maybe I should help defend Wall Town. And he runs <laughs> forward towards the Oreo. He leans down, tries to take a big bite. Thirteen or above, and Porky will do it. That one. Fucking the Porky first twenty! It takes the whole Oreo, jams into his mouth, and just crunches there like a barbarian. A fucking <laughs> lunatic. The Oreo is just spilling a giant pile of Dr. Pepper everywhere. He's been dead for like five minutes, but Porky will not get up, will not stop chomping into this corpse of an Oreo. He eats oh the entire God. fucking thing, and you guys are just Easy standing there clap. horrified. That's my mayor. The only remaining enemy is the hot pot. <laughs> this is insane. I don't know which is better. The fact that Doug Doug's an amazing DM, or the fact that everyone he's brought in so far has been really good at playing off their roles. We got the big, awesome guy who's just really kind, but also just like big green giant. 
we got the two divorced couple that do nothing but snipe at each other and Tuck Tuck just letting it all happen. I just love this. Pocket. The dynamic Wizard, is awesome. You are up next. What would you like to do? I cast magic missiles on the hot pocket, yelling my hot pocket is the only one for that bard. What? Oh my. The wizard, she runs forward next to her gigantic illusory fish and fires three magic bolts directly into the hot pocket. Now these magic missiles, they have a property that they never miss. And so they slam into the hot pocket. They go right through his body. You can actually see a big hole where the missiles have gone through. Damn. Heels over, spews out some lava onto the floor. <clears throat> oh, does it also have the three The thing lives? is hurt, but it's not quite dead. It's now Just the, one. the hot pocket's turn. It moves forward. It steps over the body of the dino nugget and spews out flaming hot lava onto you. Wizard, 12 or above, and the lava hits. Oh no. Oh! 16! He sprays out lava all over you, wizard. It scorches your arms. You go, oh god! You lose another heart. First time she's ever been hot. <laughs> oh. okay, barbarian, it is your turn again. Reckless attack the hot bucket. All right, the barbarian is going to use his reckless attack. This is going to make him more powerful, but more vulnerable next turn. And he stand runs in all the, the lava. way up to the hot pocket. And in a fury, swings his battle axe. Normally it would be a 14, but with his reckless attack, only a 9. Oh! 20. 11 Ooh. as he swings directly in the magic missile hole, ripping the entirety of the hot pocket open in half, and the hot pocket collapses onto the floor, dead uh. in the pool of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh. Oh, they actually did custom art for this? Dude, dog. And you got the bard falling in the milk, the elf wizard just going, uh, and the himbo barbarian slaying the hot pocket. <laughs> Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> this well, is awesome. You have defeated the food department. Easy. I really like the way you put your axe in my hole. Okay, you know what we're gonna Not go ahead. this again. Um <laughs> Porky, by the way, is still just like fired up. He's running around just <laughs> he has like, yeah, bro! Just fucking go, bro! I give Porky a fist bump. I can't read the food labels. Lord Busty, could you whisper them to me? What? Slowly. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's my pig. <laughs> okay. All right, looks like these two are bonding, and then the bard and Porky the pig dwarf are kind of broing out down here. <laughs> We're really seeing two couples emerge. You do see at the very back left of the room, there is stairs going Ooh, up with a sign upstairs. next to it that says clothing the department. department. Oh, Before God. you move forward, through the defeated food aisle. Can I take olive oil? Yes. On the way there, Why? you pick up a bottle of olive oil. You tuck that next to the ketchup in your armor. And oh the four God, of you just advance up. up the stairs to floor two of the magical Walmart. Oh my God, that was beautiful. I love this. They actually have chemistry. They're playing off it. We got the bard who's just sour because his ex is right there. They snipe each other. He's now just going all bro with the pig mayor who's eating their enemies. I mean, he's a flat-out orc. Then they have the actual orc. Actually, they have different kinds of orc. We have the 40k orc on screen, and we have the classical D&D orc that's a pig. So, double orc. Oh. <laughs> Orcs for everybody. I'm sorry. The people who Doug Duck has brought in have been absolutely amazing. They just keep having fun with it. They're playing to the characters. They're trying to make him get age-restricted. And the milk everywhere... Don't like playing with this. Is... Oh, I wish I had caught this live. Some of the other videos I like to condense this though. It's so insane and shows him doing so many crazy things. I want this to be live. I want to see that. I want to see what he can do with a bigger campaign. Just go to town. Have it like, hey, we're going to keep going with new people. And admittedly, that would probably be the closest you can ever get to a very regularly scheduled D&D game. Well, that got too real too fast. Yeah, because if there's an entire Twitch chat, they can always fill it. You're always going to have a full game. Unlike normal D&D, &D, where the hardest enemy is the level 20, finding out if anyone is actually able to play on the day you can actually get the DM. Yeah. Uh, that said, next time we'll go to floor two and see just what the hell's going on. If it's anything like the first floor, I'm assuming, one, it's going to be stupid. It's a D&D &D video, and it's a Doug Doug video. It's going to be dumb, and I love it. And two, they're going to improv something because they've been doing that so far, and Doug's played off it, and I really want to see that. If it wasn't because it's so freaking late, I would just go and do that right now because it's good. But also, I do need to adult in a few hours because I probably should have been asleep a few hours ago. So um, tomorrow's going to suck. But that's a problem for future me. Current me is just having a blast and is now realizing that they're also having a blast and they're really hyped up and they're not going to sleep tonight. Yeah, I think mistakes were made. Also a problem for future me, I'm going to ignore it for now.
More importantly, if you haven't already, link below, original video, hit it up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.